Welcome to the Nightly Five podcast with Ben O'Shea. The Immigration Minister, Andrew Giles, will be fighting to keep his job this morning with revelations he was warned about the implications of his controversial decision that allowed a host of dangerous criminals to stay in our country. Another day, another immigration scandal for the Albanese government and its Immigration Minister, Andrew Giles. Here to unpack it is Federal Politics Editor, Katina Curtis. Katina, what mess has Andrew Giles found himself in now? Well, it's really an ongoing continuation of the, the messes of the last six months, Ben. <laughs> um, we, we actually have heard a couple of times today now from Andrew Giles directly. He's done a few media interviews. Um, he has said that he is told the department in no uncertain terms to work as fast as it can on reissuing this direction, uh, ministerial direction that tells the AAT members and um, also departmental decision makers how, what they need to think about when they're thinking about whether visas should be cancelled. He says he's given really clear directions about exactly what I want to see um, and to make sure that the intent, uh, which is to keep the community safe, is, is you know, stands up in the, the legalistic words of, of these things. He's also been re-examining the cases of a bunch of people, um, mainly, or I think starting with the ones that have been reported in the media of these people that have committed often quite horrendous crimes, um, had their visa cancelled and then had that cancellation overturned in the in the AAT. Um, he has now re-cancelled eight visas of those. That uh, seems to have happened. There was, there was and One of them was done between about 8am this morning and when I saw him on television shortly after midday so <laughs> to give you an idea of like he, he's working through the paperwork in between I imagine fielding media queries <laughs> um, and and so there's that we've also had um, border force officials up in front of estimates uh, talking about um, the electronic monitoring of the cohort of people who we have spoken about a number of times who were released after that High Court decision last week. Um, we had some figures around at least two convicted murderers and 26 people who had been charged with sex offenders are not being electronically monitored. Um, Andrew Giles said in one of the interviews today that it was not possible, the law didn't allow them to just whack ankle monitors on every one of those 153 people like basically everyone's individual circumstances have to be considered so that's state of play where we are now um i'm about to head into question time and i expect it to be quite fiery again the coalition has really targeted andrew giles all week during question time yeah, well, let's talk about that targeting. And it's also, you know, a harsh spotlight from the media as well, because the immigration portfolio can really only be described as a dumpster fire over the past six months with Andrew Giles standing smack in the middle of it. How tenable is his position right now? Albo still seems to support him. Why is that? And what will it take for Albo to say, you got to go, bud? Oh, a lot of questions there. Um, I think, let me take one of them. Why is Albo still standing uh, in supporting him? I think, um, look, the Prime Minister's character long-standing has been that he values loyalty. Um, he, he places a very high um, priority on, on loyalty. And Andrew Giles is a is a friend and a factional ally of his. Um, he, the, the PM is also does have a bit of a streak of stubbornness about him, um, and the government is quite proud of the fact that it, it's you know it's gone two years and it hasn't had to um, go to Yarralumla and change a single minister yet. Um, you know, so they they really <laughs> regardless of how ba how bad they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> it's a strange there's, thing to be proud a of. Few, there's a few that you might point to. That you'd be like, mm, why? that person's still there but anyway so so i think so that sort of is a bit of an insight into the thinking um 
I, I, what's, what would have to happen to make him be sacked? I don't know. Look, um, the fact that he's still standing by it, I guess it depends on what else comes to light um, in the cases uh, come come out. Um, there, there's a few, you know we've obviously seen the allegations about the detainee who was allegedly involved in um, that home invasion in Perth. Like that that was pretty bad, seen as pretty bad over here. Um, and and but the, the minister's still in his job, <laughs> so it's it's kind of hard to say. I guess it depends how much further um, these these things escalate. Yeah, like it does feel as though maybe the thinking was, well, you know, we've had a bit of bad luck in this portfolio, but things will turn around. Um, But that just hasn't happened. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Uh, We'll wait and see what happens. Question time is certainly going to be fascinating. Maybe not so enjoyable for Andrew Giles, but it's always enjoyable to have you on the show. Federal Politics Editor Katina Curtis, thanks as always for sharing your insights on the Nightly Five. Thanks, Ben. Good to talk.